Well, today marks the 11th anniversary of the September 11 attacks on New York's Twin Towers and the Pentagon in Washington. The man behind the attacks has, of course, since been hunted down and killed. But coalition forces are still embroiled in the war in Afghanistan. So has the war on terrorism been a failure? Lawrence Korb is a senior fellow at the Center for American Progress, and he's also a former assistant U.S. Secretary of Defense. I spoke to him a little earlier. Lawrence Korb, good morning. We awake to the news this morning that Al-Qaeda uh, Al in the Arabian Peninsula's second in command has been killed. How significant a blow is that to what the U.S. describes as the most dangerous offshoot of the terrorist organization? Well, I think it's very serious and it follows on not only to the death of bin Laden, <clears throat> but several under other Al Qaeda leaders uh, in uh, in Pakistan and uh, and uh, Afghanistan in the in the border area, so I think it's a continuation of a a project that President Obama has uh, taken since he's come in, emphasizing more counterterrorism rather than counterinsurgency. How menacing? How dangerous was this offshoot, or is this offshoot of Al Qaeda? Well, I think it's probably more dangerous than the, the, the original one, if you will, that was in Afghanistan and Pakistan, because given the number of, of <clears throat> forces there, including your, your own country, in, uh, in that area, they're not really as much of a threat, whereas in the Arabian Peninsula, there's so much instability going on with the Arab Spring, uh, for example, that th this would be easier for them to get a, uh, to get a foothold. You mentioned Afghanistan there. Uh, one of the direct uh, outcomes of the 9-11 attacks was that US-led invasion of the country. 11 years on, more than 3,000 coalition deaths, many, many more Afghan civilians having died. Do you think it's all been worth it? Well, I think it, we, the United States, made two critical mistakes that makes it no longer worth it. Number one, when the, uh, when we, after the attacks of 9-11, NATO invoked Article 5, and we could have gone in and made it a, a, an ISAF mission right from the beginning. We decided not to. Then the other is we took our eye off the ball, went to uh, Iraq, and allowed the Taliban to come back in. The military commander at the time basically said, we missed the golden moment. And now we're in a position where there's no end in sight. And so I think it's important for us to set a date to begin to get out, maybe leave some troops there to prevent it becoming uh, a haven for Al Qaeda again, and to a certain extent, to protect the rights of the people in Afghanistan, particularly the women from the uh, horrible things that the Taliban might do if they come back and took complete control again. Is it instructive, do you believe, that uh, 11 years on, no one's really about talking about winning the war in Afghanistan? No, I mean, and of course, that's part of the problem for the United States, is before we start these wars, we, bet we should be clear about what our uh, objective is. The, is, is was our uh, objective to make sure, you know, to decimate al-Qaeda? Uh, was it to, you know, uh, make Afghanistan, a, you know, a functioning uh, democracy? And really, I think we've recognized that given the mistakes that we made, that the, basically we've got to go back to that more limited objective to make sure that it doesn't become a haven for terrorists with a global reach or destabilize the region. At the same time, and we have been talking about the al-Qaeda offshoot in Yemen, uh, how much of, of a hazard is it that we've seen this, I suppose, splintering of al-Qaeda, splintering of al-Qaeda central to various countries, various outposts over the course of the last few well, years? Yeah, and I think that, you know, they have adapted because, if you will, we pretty well destroyed al-Qaeda central, particularly after we got bin Laden. And so they'll go to areas of the world that would be... Uh, at least initially, beyond the reach of the uh, the Allied forces, and there's no doubt about the fact that they'll take advantage of instability. Uh, you see them, for example, coming into Syria now. The ones who tried to go into Iraq, they weren't into Iraq till we got there, and then they came in. Obviously, with the the change of governments in in Yemen, that becomes another advantage. And I have no doubt that uh, they're going to try and make inroads in Somalia. Eleven years since those terror attacks, Lawrence Corr, we've seen both the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan play out. As you know, we've also seen a, a huge crackdown in domestic U.S. security. Given all of that, do you believe that 11 years on, the U.S. homeland is any safer from a major terrorist attack? Well, I think we're safer primarily because, if you will, we've taken the fight to al-Qaeda. We've put them on the defensive. 
We've also worked with our, our allies around the world, share intelligence and cooperation, so it'll make it more difficult for them to do like they did on 9-11. Uh, on, on our domestic uh, procedures there, if anything, they yes, they have ameliorated it somewhat, but there's been a, a great overreaction. Uh, it's almost impossible to get on an airplane uh, now, and they, they've really made it much more difficult. We've really stopped a lot of well-meaning people, particularly students who would like to come to the United States to study. So on balance, I think internationally we've done fine. Uh, domestically, I think we've overreacted. So you believe that security pen has swung a bit too far. Well, I, I do. I think, you know, we had the so-called Patriots Act, and, and there's no doubt about the fact that they, they've tapped, you know, phone calls of, uh, of uh, you know, Americans without uh, court permission. We know that uh, there were some really uh, dubious legal opinions that allowed uh, American interrogators to do things to prisoners that they should never have done and waterboarding. And, and we know that at least a couple of prisoners have died. So I think we did overreact. And I think the overreaction is what led us to go into uh, Iraq, which had no connection to 9-11, but it created such a, the attacks created such a sort of a war fever in the country that people were willing to believe their leaders that this, this had to be done. And finally, with two months to play out in the U.S. presidential election campaign, how much do you believe the issue of national security will influence votes on November the 6th? Well, I think it's going to play to the Democrats' advantage up until uh, certainly uh, 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 recently. Uh, the Republicans had always been stronger on national security, and when people were worried about that, they would tend toward the Republicans. The great paradox is the Obama administration is much stronger on, on national security than uh, Governor Romney is. Uh, he has very little foreign policy experience. In fact, Congressman Ryan asked, well, what kind of foreign policy experience you have? He said, well, I voted for the war in Iraq. And, of course, Governor Romney's trip overseas did not turn out too well. Americans are very happy that we're getting out of Iraq, that we're out of Iraq or on our way out of Afghanistan, and we got bin Laden. So I think it will play to the advantage of the Democrats in this election, maybe offsetting some of the problems they're obviously going to have with the economic situation of the country. Lawrence Corbin, Washington, thank you very much for your insights this morning. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.